I think the major consequences of the inability to go personally insolvent are become personally insolvent. <laughs> what do you think the major consequences are of the inability to become personally insolvent in Guernsey? Well, it's, it's with you, isn't it? You're just sucking what you just said, really. So, I mean, what you're sort of saying, you need the legislation. I haven't heard that before. So I don't know, you know, if you've spoken to PNR or who you've spoken to to actually ask for this to take place to address these issues which you're actually talking about. Now, he's brought that to my attention in the 26 years I've been in the States, so this is new to me to have to hear that. So, um, so if you hear about these things, obviously you can do that. So, do you, Nia, what do you think the consequences are of not being able to well, again, I don't know more than what we've just been told, so, so it's just not a really a couple of things. So, horrible life, horrible with families and children. People sometimes go leave the island because they cannot live here because they don't think around them. And it's also a huge disincentive to start a business if you realise that your debt can take you down for the rest of your life through no fault of your own. So, uh, we think there are massive consequences. Sure. Um, and I think we've been talking about it for a long time, but um, maybe we've been But the GFSC we have, because you've got all of that in your finance, yeah. and if you go to court, so that area is covered. Cool, that's all corporate. Yeah. 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 individuals. Yeah. individuals. Yeah. 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 And it's for individuals, because you can't take a directorship if you've been to court for, no. for fraud. No. So that's covered already under the law. For that, that side of it, but you're talking about the bank Personal insolvency. But I think nobody's actually brought that to my attention. Okay. So I'd be more than happy to find We're, out about that. Do you that need to know more? We've got a lot of those. Yeah, no, because the other question we'd like to ask is what would you do about in work poverty were you to be elected? In work poverty? Mm. What would I do about in work poverty? Uh, try and get the businesses to start paying a decent rate of pay sometimes. So then is there else as a third sector organisation? We have staff that are better off perhaps not working than working for us. As a charity, you can't just have our No, I get that. Half pay. I get that. Um, and uh, there are, encouraging. you know, I mean, I've been involved with charities before, and the people that have worked in the charities have said, you know, rightly or wrongly, that, you know, they are working in charities, but they know they could earn more, actually, in the private sector. But they see that as their part of the work of the charity, because that's where they want to work. Now, it's been said before, well, maybe the charities should be paying the right amount uh, for their stuff. So it's that balance again of what would you do if the charities are trying to survive. Um, and you see that as they've got their volunteers. Do you think we should have a living wage? Yeah. As in, should be published in a living wage to encourage people to make the rules again? I mean, should there be a living wage? I think we do in the world, yes. Um, no, so what I mean, in, in other jurisdictions, the yeah, state yeah, publishes yeah. what a living wage is. Yeah. That's above what the minimum wage is to try yeah, and embarrass yeah. businesses. Yeah. Business. Yeah. It doesn't exist in Guernsey. No, it doesn't exist in Guernsey. It doesn't exist in Guernsey. Other places have gone to Guernsey. We can afford to do a lot more. No, no, but simply stating what the state believes the living wage to be without paying it. Yeah. Puts pressure on businesses to raise the minimum wage, people on minimum wage, towards the consumer. So some yeah, people have said they would not do that. And when we went out to consultation on that, there was great feedback from businesses. Yes. Because it's more open, you know, more expensive than the bottom line. There's a huge kickback. So again, you know. I don't think I'm going to make a mental point of saying living wage is simply like somebody saying the minimum wage you need to live and compensate in terms of this way. It is time to pay for some reason. You know, the minimum wage. No, 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 the minimum wage is the living wage should be. And the minimum wage is below the minimum wage. So, but we don't have, nobody said what they believe the living wage is in Guernsey. That's the distinction. Yes, I understand it. I'm Minister of Social Security. No, no, but I actually didn't seem to. About medium earnings and about living wage and about pensions. So, do you believe we should have now. Do you think we should have published a living wage? Should we publish a living wage or have yeah. it? No, publish it. 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 Publish it.
place to do that in order to embarrass us. That's the idea. That's why I was trying to say that. Obviously, you know, somebody's actually going to go and do that work and take them away from what they're actually meant to be doing. Thank you, sir. Not a bit of But no, I get what you're saying. So, what you're saying, but what you're actually gain from it by publishing it if you think that's embarrassing people to try and do something that's. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I think the other consequence of this might be so the, the, consequences the, of in, of the, the inability to go to become insolvent personally, which is pretty unique to Guernsey. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, yes. I imagine that the, you mean in terms of the sort of social or legal or both. A whole raft of things. Yeah, I mean, I, yeah, I, can, I can imagine the same, as well. yeah, social impact on, um, on the family unit and uh, the amount of break, pressure on marriages. Um, yeah, I think the legal consequences of the individual of being unable to, to, to clear a debt. Uh, I mean, I guess you said in terms of being a life sentence, but the ability to, to start again. Uh, whether it's uh, rebuilding or starting a new business or, or um, you know, holding down another uh, you know, holding down a position of yeah. responsibility without having to, to, to declare their, their, their own disaster and, and their, their, their impact on their ability to, to work. So yeah, I mean, I, think, I should imagine that they are pretty significant. Well, we think this, we can't quantify that. Um, it's not much clever than us um, to do that, but that we think there's an enormous economic cost mm. because previously economic productive people uh, suddenly will become a massive burden on the state mm. and their families mm. and cease to be productive and cease to contribute. So that we think there's an enormous. Do, we, uh, do, do you say you can't quantify it? I mean, do you again? Do you have anecdotal experience? Yes, we've got those of case studies. Yeah. I mean, you, I mean yeah. you, can, you don't have to go very far yeah. to realise. There must be an yes. enormous cost. I mean, I think, I think uh, without doubt, 100% of the people that I deal with on that side of things, uh, they are all depressed, they're all on medication, as are usually the wives. Quite a lot of the children seem to end up like self-harming and other um, addiction becomes issues. And, that sort of, and then the families break down, yeah. then it gets worse. And it just goes on and on and on, basically. And it, it's, 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 it's odd, even though we say at, at the moment maybe 100 to 200 people, so it's not a, it's not a you know, it's a of thing. Except those, you know, to take the worst number, 200. Except with, with COVID, we think it could easily be a lot. But they've got a wife or a partner, they've got children, they've got brothers and sisters and mothers and grandparents who all get sucked into this when something gets close to And it's just this issue there is no legal pathway to deal with personal insolvency. Every major jurisdiction does, except Guernsey. I think there's also, there is, the, we, and that there is, and there must be an economic way to make it happen. But beyond that, it seems to me there's a, there's a clear moral impact. Every single major moral system or religious system offers you the right to be forgiven if you've done something wrong. In this, no one's done anything wrong. And they're not offered that chance of redemption. It's an appalling situation. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the policy decisions already been made, isn't it? Isn't it? Is it or not? Well, I, I'm, I'm not ironically. I'm sitting on a, 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 a subcommittee, yeah. which I think is working on behalf of the states to try and review yeah. to see what yeah. so it's like. Really, so it's, it's, a, it's, it's a question just of prioritising the legislation, isn't it? Exactly. So, it's, so I mean, that's why we're trying to highlight. In that sense, it, it's yeah. one less obstacle because at least the policy yeah. choice is yeah. being made. Yeah. Yeah. But again, I mean, so, I think, so it has also one consumer protection that was done in 2016. Yeah. But nothing but, happens. And, and then it has a lot of as well. Yeah. <laughs> It allows people to to have a manageable way to understand, you know, this, the debt, and they can put it aside, deal with it, and then move on with the rest of their lives. I think the idea that you've got something hanging over you for the rest of your life, you can't ever get beyond that, and I think that has a major, major effect on your your, your well-being for the rest of your life. You know, you've always got this dog on your back, and it is a really traumatic thing going through insolvency as it is. Yes. You know, it's a big thing. And then to have no ability to get rid of it or to move on beyond that, because you're always going to have this 
burden, uh, I think, yeah, I, I would certainly make a big difference to allowing people mechanisms and tools to move on with their life. Yeah, it should be empowering people to be able to, to move on. Um, I agree with what Sarah said about it. it's the unhidden un things that uh, happen. A, a lot of uh, things in Gen Z happen around relationships. Um, it's not uh, you know what you know, it's who you know. Um, and if you're already described as insolvent or, or you know bankrupt or, or whatever, um, even if the mechanism was there, um, a lot of people would still not be have the security or the confidence to be able to uh, to deal with it yes. um, because of the you know, perception of yes. others around there and that's again something that, that needs working on and if the state supported something um, some legislation that was in place then I think it, it might help that uh, stigma that's uh, attached to people mm. as well because it's not necessarily the best call though you know some people, some people can manage the debt and um, but it's the, the stigma around yeah. of, of being of having been in sort of um, I think it must be mental health. It affected a lot of people. It must be immensely stressful, and you can't so it's just get a dog off your back. Um, I think in the UK, isn't it? There's five years that you can. Yeah. So that's what we should be aiming at. It's, yeah. That seems a fair. Thing. So, so it varies. Yeah. It varies, but yes, it can be. It can be as low as a year. It can be as much as three. It can be about. It's, it's not. It's not hard and fast. There needs to be a set period when you can yeah. get out of it. Yeah. Yeah. And rebuild your life and and so one of the things we really part of your yeah. is to. I, I think there'd certainly be mental health issues. You know, somebody's going to be at wit's end, and um, there, there, there could be a danger that they actually decide to to take the, the not the easy way out, but you know, mental health, mental health. Yeah, that's always the danger. Take their lives at the end of the road. Can't see any hope. Can't see any light at the end of the tunnel. Need to be thrown a lifeline. I'm sure it's less efficient for the economy in general because you know if people are insolvent they can you know, put a line under what had happened before and then get, get back in and get back to work and earn so, money. So we believe there's no capital cost in doing this. Yeah. A massive mental health benefit and a massive economic. Yeah, I mean this is what sort of IBAs in the UK all that. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So good somebody. <laughs> so, one of the questions we asked is, is what other consequences do you think there might be of the inability to become personally insolvent? Yeah. Well, those debts are with you almost constantly. I mean, you're, you're all, it's, if you don't have some sort of scheme to manage your debts, you're, you're clearly going to be at the mercy of whoever is, whatever demands. Um, are going to be placed upon you and, and I guess that can be it can affect your housing situation which would be extremely serious and uh, if it affects your housing it starts to affect employment and everything else so yes the consequences uh, can be very severe and especially kind of, if you have dependents it impacts upon them as well children or any other members of the vulnerable members of the household etc with no income of their own or limited income so we are clearly uh, I, I guess it also means that you know <laughs> that there's no well there's clearly no quality of life uh, after something after something like that but uh, again as you see I appreciate the fact that it's a life sentence because once you have that kind of kind of problem in your life and trying trying to clear those debts you're always constantly uh, you're always constantly trying to uh, keep the wolf from the door. Yes. Uh, you could have a whole pack of wolves, really. Yes. There's, there's no way of managing it. I mean, I suppose you've got the, also got the problem of if you don't have a... You know, as it is with, with um, corporate insolvency, you've, you've, got a, you've got a certain order in which debts must be satisfied. Right. So there's no way of ordering that. So there's no way of prioritising the debts. And, and if you've not got the, the help if you, if you don't have outside help, for some people, I suppose to you're to avoid doing it, then you have the you have the problem of the 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 they, they pay the one debt, but it, it, they may be, if without advice they may be paying the wrong debt, right. which then has consequences. So you've paid the you've paid the rent the, the telephone bill, uh, so as you don't get cut off, 
but unfortunately you've missed your mortgage you pay when your house is repossessed. Correct. Well, that sort of thing. We also think there's a huge cost to the economy. Yes. Because this brings down families. Yes. And children. And leads to addiction. Well, I would assume your house may well go into the melting pot. And obviously you wouldn't have any money for um, for a deposit on another. Correct. So you'd be in the uh, in the rental sector, which is pretty unstable at the moment. Anything else? Any other? Any other? Presumably, the banking issue is a, is a big one, isn't it? So yes. That, that must, you, know, you must not be able to have a bank account and how can you operate in this modern day and age without a bank account? I mean, it's a, anything else? Does, does, credit cards. Does it, does it also, I mean, literally, is it, would it be a case then that every penny you then earned? You are then having to give a portion to. Uh, yes, whoever. basically, the labour system, even in games of labour, it's alone. Everybody is allowed to live. Right. Um, but which is, but it's, it's basic, you know, yeah. you, you know. You can pay your rent, you can pay the food, you can give food for your children. Uh, you know, it, it's, but it's definitely at uh, minimum wage, bread level type of stuff. And in fact, most people end up insolvent. You usually end up on benefits, or certainly end up on income support for trying to top things up. And probably the creditors are getting very, very little, if anything. It's not um, a lifestyle choice. It's, it's not a very good so, lifestyle choice. So, what I'm saying is, is, is there's no no one that would do it of their own volition. So, no. in many ways, so, so, so we can't prove this, but obviously there's a big, big uh, link with um, addiction, mental health, yeah. suicide. Yeah. Talented people leaving the island, and I would personally argue an enormous economic disincentive to start business. Because why would you, when the downside to no fault of your own is that yeah. you can end up with and nothing? And when they when they then leave the island, if, if people are in this position, does their debt go with them? Yes, uh, in the new jurisdiction as well. You'd have to. It's like anything. You have to go and chase it. Yeah. Uh, you, if, if they went to the UK, the difference obviously if they went to the UK is. There, they can declare themselves yeah. personally insolvent, and, uh, and 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 Guernsey debt could get swept into it that way. But you know, but again, it tears families apart. You know, people so exporting the problem. Exporting the problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Personally insolvent. Well, that's that. I I don't know. Um, there was a question somewhere else about bankruptcy, and I really don't know. So I okay. in, in, like your information. Don't think that's quality of life because you just you know yeah. Yeah, every day you're building up more debt. You're never going to get out from under it. Yeah. And then you've got the mental health. Yeah. You, well, you lose all your assets, yeah. and then you've got that's true. the mental health side of things, depression, because there's no way out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're, you're stripped of all of your assets, and um, and yeah. yeah. You, you still have that debt, don't you? You can't yes. actually get rid of that. You can't get rid of it. So, no. Would you lose your home? Yes, you might well do. If, if right. it, generally, most houses have got a, a, a secured, it'll put a mortgage, there'll, there'll be a bond over it, and if you can't meet your payments, yes, the bank. That, that is repossessed. Worse repossessed. than that, having lost everything, you then still have the debt hanging around you. Yes. Yeah. 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 So it's basically personal insolvency, it's a life sentence. It literally is a yes. life sentence in Guernsey. Also, in the UK, you, no, it's not. Your assets haven't actually been sold for, for what they're actually worth. No, they the can be forced, they're they're often a forced sale yes. arrangement, yes. Which, uh, right. which means yeah. you get low value and yeah. you, you yeah. still get debt hanging around your so neck. So it's a tragedy. And some of the people this happens to have had, through no fault of their own, their restaurants gone bust, for example, mm. and that's it for the rest of their life that they've done. Yeah. Yeah. I, although in the UK you can, you can also go insolvent in every other developed economy on the planet. But not here. But not here. <laughs> <laughs> so that's why we're so That's why we're trying to push it. But without, um, without political will, it, it's not going So down. that debt is never repaid? And it just sits with you. So you can't do anything, you can't do anything with and, it. And do you know the proportion of people that are affected by that in good Yeah, we've, we've got massive data. So you want to find yeah, out more. Yeah. We've got yeah. huge data sheets. Of, and actually... And do, do you know just a rough number or not? Uh, uh, physical head. numbers. It's, no, no, it's, it's... As things currently... It's, it's not a huge, huge number. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, it's probably... At top end, maybe... 
hundred, two hundred people. And the families. Families. But it's, yeah, it's yeah. the effect on the yeah. families, and it, it, it's a lifetime issue yeah. as well. It's, 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 you it's, you cannot, it's, 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 it's rather, yeah. I, I, we put, put it up as, along with human rights. You know, it's sort of, surely you know, you want people to get back to being hopefully you know, income earners, taxpayers, and everything else. When you've got debt. God. Yeah, there's no incentive for, yeah. no. and, and, and a lot of them. Yeah. 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 Well, they couldn't start another one. No, but no. anyone starting a business oh, probably doesn't realise no. yeah. when they start. The problem, but if yeah. the business goes bad, then it's a personal business. Yeah. Yeah. They're, they're lost. Yeah. They're crazy. It's, a, it's a very high risk to yeah. take to start a business yeah. in Guernsey mm -hmm. if you're putting if you're going to go to ten years. Have you got another question? Yeah. How would you? What would you generally to address poverty if you were there? Well, I'd, I'd raise the minimum wage, the living wage, first of all, that needs to be done. What is the living wage? The living wage is something that is more than the, the uh, minimum wage, which does allow people to have a reasonable quality of life. It doesn't exist here? No, it doesn't. No, no, that's the point. No, it doesn't exist here. And the minimum wage didn't exist here either till about... Um, 12 years ago. Mm. So, yeah. <laughs> I, I, well, there's definitely a question of how do you define poverty because there's various metrics, but broadly I would support progressive increases in minimum wage. Mm. Um, and then also, uh, what really interests me is the longer term aspects of actually bringing down the cost of living on Guernsey. We know the biggest costs are housing, so when we can do more support for the, you know, the really, really poor on Guernsey, make sure that that's supported, but then also generally we can bring down housing costs, and then also, um, sorry, utility bills and those other costs and food costs as well. Yeah, we need to increase minimum wage, and we need to increase the house, social housing we're building, because yeah. we, we really haven't touched social housing properly for, for decades, so we definitely need to increase social housing. Thank you very much. Amazingly, that was the bell. Thank you very much indeed. Yes. Yeah. A lot of it is just one of Just a very briefly, there's one our main issue. Our main issue that we are. Uh, one of the main issues of putting forward is personal insolvency, which some people might find quite confusing. Um, there, there's a lot of Guernsey legislation about company and corporate liquidation or insolvency, but there isn't for private individuals. There is in the UK, and it caters for, for all forms of bankruptcy and insolvency in the UK, um, from it's quite small to quite large. So there's, there's no such personal, personal insolvency. Yeah, I didn't know. I knew there was in the UK, but I didn't know what it was. Yeah, yeah. It's just seems ridiculous. And the only thing that we see is, is where it seems so sad with, 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 with personal insolvency is that if you happen to have done something wrong, you know, businesses fail, you get injured, ill, whatever, and it's not your own fault, but you get debts. It's a life sentence over here. You yeah. cannot get rid of it. There's no way to get rid of it. And so it's just, it literally is a life sentence at the moment. Whereas in the UK, if people go to the UK, you say, well, go to the UK, you can, you can become personally insolvent. Yeah. Exactly. That, that's one of, one of the problem, main yeah. issues. But anyway, Richard would just like to ask a couple of questions, and then perhaps we'll come seek your, seek your views. And if, just to say, if you are lucky enough to get elected and want to find out more about any of these four things, we've got massive data banks. So we're one of the only sources of social data in the world. Um, so I guess our overall question is, how would Good you sales. address... <laughs> Good sales. Good uh, How would you address work and poverty during your term? Um, well, poverty and work, it should be. So work and poverty. Poverty and work. Poverty in work. Well, people have got jobs, but they're, mm. they're, they're still basically very, very poor. Isn't it? It's low pay. Living wage, yeah. anyway. Yeah. I think we, we should be going with the living wage. Uh, um, the very low paid over here, which generally uh, is in your hospitality sector and so sort of like, uh, that just isn't happening, and we sort of know that. Um, uh, yeah, possible, and um, sort of in the building trade as well. We sort of, uh, it's okay. So, living wage, any other 
I mean, the income support was supposed to address this really, wasn't it? Yes. That was um, supposed to be the, the, the magic bullet that was going to sort out inward poverty forever. Yes. I, I know that it's only introduced in 2016, 2017. Um, and they shouldn't I, leave it to the state to support. Yeah. Sorry? They shouldn't leave it to the state to support. No, but I mean, at the end of the day, the, 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 there is... You've got you've got businesses that pay a uh, minimum wage that can't afford to pay anything other than a minimum wage if they continue with their current business model. But what it needs it, it needs creative thinking from business to be able to see how they can. Frankly, minimum wage is eight pound fifty to they yeah, live on. Yeah. No, no. Yeah. This is why we have income support mm. because people, uh, some businesses out there, can't survive without minimum wage. It's great to have it. It needs to be. How much do you think uh, living wage would be a good idea? Living wage would just at least tell businesses what somebody considers a living well, that, wage. Yeah, that's the, that's the point that they're saying that you're earning enough to be able to to live. Basically, yeah, eight pound fifty, you can't do it. Uh, it's as simple as that. Isn't it? So in the UK, they have a minimum wage and a living wage, mm -hmm. and there's a lot more pressure on businesses to pay, pay the living wage. wage. Yeah. Obviously, some can't afford to, mm -hmm. but those that can. But it should be an aspiration. But one is mandatory, and the other is it doesn't exist here, unfortunately. No, no. There's an interesting fact of the. Uh, of the minimum wage is that they basically the states take uh, what, an average wage of what they think the people are going to need. They take 60% of that, and of that 60%, that's already a low wage, uh, they divide it by 40 hours per week for 52 weeks a year. And that's, that's the living wage, which is why it's so low. It's, it's, you've got to do 40 hours. To even get it, so it's just what is such a small. But it's compounded by the like housing prices and price to, to, to live anywhere on the island. I mean, it, uh... um, to what extent do you think Guernsey has a poverty problem? Um, and depending on your answer, how do you go about tackling it? So, yes, Guernsey does have a poverty problem. It's quite interesting, you said the last review was in 2015. In 2016, I used to work for Park Lime in charity supporting people who were on benefits, trying to get them employment. These people were had physical mental issues. And I had to do, I had to go to people's houses because even though to, to enable them to have better mental health or better physical health, it's always good to see their house and to ensure that their house is as livable as possible. Mm -hmm. So to, to get a person, one of my clients, to change to a different house, I had to go and inspect it and follow the report. So I walked in and he was paying. 900, 900 pound a month, most of it was benefits, but 900 pound a month on a house whereby you walked through the door and you walked within five steps to the kitchen and then there he had his bedroom, a little hallway, I mean it was, it was so small, the town it was, it was so small it was unbelievable and it's then, just then, yeah. Mm. And, and it is just then that it dawned me, dawned me four years ago how how much poverty is an issue yeah. in Guernsey. Yeah. In terms of, so without a doubt there's a poverty mm -hmm. issue in Guernsey, there's also an issue whereby people are property rich, got that cash poor. Yeah. And I think there's a discrepancy of what you've said in terms of the people who have who are working, but they're still below the breadline, mm -hmm. even though they might need supplementary benefits. Yeah. In terms of, in terms of uh, improving the situation, yeah. firstly, I think I would, well, our party would raise raise the minimum wage okay. to so instead of a minimum wage, make it a living wage. Yeah. Well, that's that's something that Guernsey has to do okay. without a shadow of a doubt. Just quickly before I move on, uh, do you have any idea what the, the difference between the minimum wage and the, um, what the living wage would be? In terms of now or in terms of what, what we're saying? So, so, yeah, I mean, how, how much do you think the minimum wage would have to increase to become a living wage? In our estimation? I would say probably minimum wage at the moment is 850. 
for people over 21? Mm -hmm. I would say probably mm, half again, yes. Okay. Like Thank you. Just because of time, but so in, in summary, then um, recognise there's a problem, and one of the ways that you tackle it is to introduce a living wage. And just to check definition, so by your by your definition, living wage would mean that you could, if you work full time and earn that, you wouldn't need to rely on benefits to earn that amount. Okay. Thank you. I think um, if we take it as a given, because we obviously uh, I think we will understand that there is in work property and there is property there. And, um, one of the, there's two problems, I think. There's the cost of renting accommodation, which is pretty grim. I mean, I, I spoke to somebody who was paying £1,280 a month for a one-bedroom flat for a place of accommodation. And Strangely, it's a deputy that owns the house. But anyway, that's, that's not a good idea. Um, what, what the other problem, the three other problems that contribute to this are uh, social insurance contributions. In the UK, there's £9,810 is the lower limit. When you go over that limit, you, don't, you still don't pay anybody for and you start from scratch. So, for example, if somebody's earning, uh, shall we say, um, £13,000 13, a year, they might be paying nothing at £60 in the UK social insurance, over here it's around about £660. So I think you have to you have to move up, you, you really have to have a, a non-contributory level and keep it there, that, that helps. The other thing is, later on in life, when you eventually fall off the perch and go into um, the old age pension, you need to be able to at least get the old age pension. Now, the accrual rate, which is a bit uninteresting, is different here. So it means that £175 in the UK after 35 years, 42 years, you can to get the same figure. Now, theoretically, if you work through your goals and get up to about 50 pounds, you can get an extra £50. Pounds. So you're, you're 50 pounds better off. But at present, 40% of pensioners don't get that. The other thing is when you have single, um, single pensions on the road, TRP has gone up for a house of uh, 200 and above by 26.9%. That's the minimum amount that has gone up. It goes up up to 57%. So but I think there should be an adjustment made to rates and taxes for people who are living on their own. Okay. Those are things that you can do straight away. Yep. Um, and I'm sure you've got more terms than we've all got last time. So you the see. idea of the adjustment because I, I've sat on social security for 18 years. You get, your, you get a chance to say something wrong. Uh, we, we, we have a, we have focused, and I think we've succeeded in going in the opposite direction of the UK in raising benefit limitations. But our focus has been on permanence in relative poverty and the other issues like single, single parents and one child are, are, are not doing well. Uh, and frankly, the real problem is that the government has been weak and not standing up to policy and resources and demanding a totally different budget, budget framework uh, and, 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 and taxation framework. But the state's members have said. We're unaware of mm -hmm. the disparity that happens um, and the money. I'm going to rewind a little bit uh, mm -hmm. with that. I think there's, I think the, the, the loss of selection in terms of, uh, I'm a bit worried. I'm going to start. Okay. Yeah. I'm, I'm a bit worried about what being happening in the education at the moment uh, because there has been what I liked about the grammar school when I arrived in Guernsey, mm -hmm. it's not the selection process, but why I like the fact that there was some, it was, com it was non-discriminating with, uh, in terms of social background. Okay. So and once I, you were through the door, it was... Exactly, and everybody anything. was the same, mm -hmm. and you could come with well, whatever background you could be part of. And, and yes, there are massive disparities, and I think we need to, as a measurement, possibly, yeah, and as an island, probably put that on the map a lot more. I think it's very striking when when I, I live in town and mm -hmm. sometimes you can see that there are some people that are, are, are in need. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. and honestly, uh, I, I don't think it's fair when you see the wealth that we have. So I think there may be a, 
room for having some maybe tax reforms that, okay. that would enhance so the element of redistribution of redistribution and probably taxing the people who can actually uh, afford it. I'd be in favor of this. Okay. Um, but I don't know, I might be on my own. I'm an independent candidate. I'm a new <laughs> candidate, so I've got very little. No. Uh, well, no, right now, that's what it's about, is what you, what, so what you would do. I'd, so be fair, I'd be fair. Thank you. Go on. No, it's always the first one. <laughs> <laughs> are you proving? We are proving. Yeah. Um, facts are shocking. Simple as that. Um, uh, as I've said on uh, previous um, tables, um, unfortunately, the wealth here is visible and the poverty is invisible. Uh, and one person living next to another person would, could assume that they're fine and they're not. Um, how do we get that uh, that change? You mentioned redistribution of wealth. I mean, uh, that is actually some a phrase that is quite people are quite wary of. They certainly mm -hmm. used to be. Um, but I think what has happened, certainly through COVID um, and certainly through Guernsey Together, is a, a feeling, a warmth, which we've got to use um, and continue and roll it forward. Because that redistribution is really fundamentally what we need to do. Mm -hmm. Now, I would rather do it through um, in, 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 uh, encouraging um, uh, increasing minimum wage. Age, mm -hmm. um, uh, and uh, rather than through a benefit system, right. so so we get the employers to pay their worthy. But we, why 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 are we setting a, a wage that employment employers pay and then top it up with income support? It just doesn't mm -hmm. make mm -hmm. sense. Um, so so there are sort of a multitude of different assets, but also there's the education piece mm -hmm. of actually being able to um, work out a, a way to get people who have to understand that what what the situation is out there. So clearly. Okay. Um, the uh, debate for um, in white poverty, there was uh, quite a few voices who were, who were uh, acknowledging that, but there was also voices who weren't, right. um, and and which is which is a shame. And and there are people who need to be uh, educated and um, explained how this can happen. We will have difficulties with um, elements of taxation for uh, obviously high net worth. But that's that. You know, if they want to live on Guernsey, it's a great place to be. It, that's part and parcel of what comes with it. You've got to. The society in which you live. Okay. Um, I don't think there's going to be that much problem with that. So, um, principal motor of, of tackling the problem for you would be an increase in the minimum wage. So, to shift the burden away from the benefit system onto yeah. or, or, or make work pay to a greater extent, yeah. and then um, a, the backdrop being a sort of a wider re education piece so people are, are quicker to accept that there is a problem with poverty on the island. Okay. Very simplistic. simplistically, yes. <laughs> I'm I thought it was neatly yeah, summarised. But... <laughs> it was neatly summarised, but it's still simplistically, yeah, it I'm afraid. We've got not much time. The island has a poverty problem, uh, and how should we go about tackling it? Um, so, especially over the last six months, it seems to have got worse. Um, after going to the Churches Convention on Friday night and speaking about how the, how much increase of the food banks has been, it's almost like on threefold, if not more, for a 14 week period. Um, <clears throat> how we tackle it, um, obviously community values, goodwill, maybe introduce more food drop-off points in um, supermarkets, um, you know, maybe use social media tools and things like that. I see there's some more modern um, um, kind of like, is it Oli or something like that, that they're doing these gifting things. But um, yeah, just reach out to people, show that we've got good community values, that we support island does mm -hmm. uh, and try and tackle it that way. I mean, everyone should have a roof over their head, they should be fed, they shouldn't be going hungry. Um, so, yeah, just, just promote kindness. Okay, so some universal standards of living which you'd adhere to, um, but you yeah. sort of you, you leverage the third sexual community support to, to alleviate the problems. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, thank you. I think one of the things that we might, might do is look at food production mm -hmm. and see if, see if we can't. How, how much food we can actually produce that we can that we can keep in Ireland, where we can give employment to people to produce the food, mm -hmm. to work among the, um, people like grow the mm -hmm. where they've got disabled community that are already growing things. Mm -hmm. See how we can develop that, and push that out. Okay, so create employment opportunities, more employment opportunities, and sort of kill two birds with one stone by making us less dependent on I imported think so, food. Yes. Thank you. Hi, um, well I did a video uh, following the article in the press mm -hmm. um, recently because I've pretty much lived this, I don't know if I thought, I, I would have to look at the facts and go back to my old salary, but you know, single parent, private rental, in full time work, 
one bedroom flat, sharing a bedroom with my daughter until she was five. Mm -hmm. And I breathed a sigh of relief that she went to school and I didn't have to pay the childcare anymore. Mm -hmm. um, and that meant we could move to a grand two bedroom flat. <laughs> um, so I'm totally, you know, in work poverty is a subject that's really close to my heart. Um, what did I need when I was in that situation? <sighs> I need to, needed to stop being told that I earn too much. Mm -hmm. You know, when I ask for help, any sort of means testing mm -hmm. just seemed to price me out of the game. Mm -hmm. And I sure as hell didn't feel like I've earned too much. You know, mm -hmm. we were living on about 20 pounds worth of, mm -hmm. of food a week between the two of us. Mm -hmm. um, and that doesn't go far in Guernsey, as we know. Um, so I really feel that maybe the constraints of where assistance is a, is given mm -hmm. need to be need to be broadened it's not just about earnings it's about your outgoings and yeah. you know particularly if people aren't um, taking up a state's house if they're if they're make, you know in the private sector mm -hmm. then there has to be some sort of breaks on that okay. you know, some some sort of help i needed money yeah that's what i needed so you needed money in your pocket and yeah. you'd say look at the pinch points within the means tested systems yeah. and take account of other of a, of a broader range of expenses now yeah. yeah okay i've got other questions but i'm going to